So I'm going to start with some of the youngest uh, children um, and how they deal with technology issues. What I'm going to be talking about um, are two studies that I run have run out of my center. That one. Okay. Oh. Oh yeah. We thank them. We thank them. Um, the first one is called Parenting in the Age of Technology, and it came out in 2014. And the second one, on Technology in the Lives of Early Childhood Educators and Early Childhood Programs. Um, those were two studies. One came out in 2013. The one in 2015 will be out in a few weeks, but I'll be presenting data here that will be part of that report. Parenting study uh, comes totally out of Northwestern and is funded out of Northwestern. But the technology study was a collaborative project with the National Association for the Education of Young Children and the Fred Rogers Center at St. Vincent College. And um, the, those studies have been released at NAAYC and has been a way for tracking how early childhood educators are adopting or not adopting technology in their classrooms. So the parenting study I want to talk about first. We did a national sample of over 2,300 parents of children from birth to age eight. And our interest was to understand how parents incorporate digital technologies, iPads, smartphones, but also more traditional technologies like uh, television and uh, books, uh, old technologies, into their children's lives. As well, um, we were interesting in the, interested in the parenting practices. And I have to say that this study came about because of um, discussion I had with uh, one of my graduate students one day in lab meeting where there had been an article in the New York Times saying that these five and six year olds were forcing technology on their parents and that these young children were leading the way and um, I really didn't believe that I really didn't believe that young children were leading the way with technology I thought there was something more going on in the house and that led to our doing that study and indeed, um, some of the main things that we found out from that study is that parents use media and technology as a tool for managing the daily life of their children. Uh, but books, toys, and other activities are used more often than, at least in 2013 when we did the study, uh, than iPads and, and um, well, I, and even television at that point with the really young children. We were also interested in whether uh, parents had conflict around technology because that was another one of the sort of, uh, I won't say myths, but one of the, the memes that you tended to see in the popular press. And we found that only, that only about a fifth of the parents were reporting that they negotiated media use conflicts in their homes over uses of technology. We were really heartened to see the extent to which uh, the parents of these children, eight and younger, believed in the educational benefits of media with one exception, they uniformly disliked video games. But every other technology, they thought you could find content that was educational for young children. And the most important finding, just as I suspected, is that it's really the parents who set the media ecology in the home. And I'll explain what I mean by that. We found that there were three different types of parenting styles that seemed to capture uh, the 2,300 parents that we were looking at. We called the first group, which um, represents, let me get my notes, about 27% of parents, media-centric parents. These are parents who spend a great deal of time outs outside of work using media. Uh, four and a half, almost four and a half hours with TV, three and a, and a third hour, three and a half hours with computers, uh, almost two hours with smartphones, even a half hour with video games. They spend 11 hours a day with media. And their children are heavy media users, almost four and a half hours. The media moderate parents, which represent about 47% of the parents that we interviewed, spend uh, uh, slightly less, almost half, the amount of time, almost a little bit less than five hours a day with screen media. And their children spend under three hours a day with screen media. Media moderate parents, again, represented almost half of the sample, 47% of parents. And then we found the media light families. Media light parents spend less than two hours a day uh, with screen media, and their children spend a lot less. <laughs> media light parents represent about 26% of the parents that we had. So um, as we suspected, it's not that the young children are dragging their parents into the technology age. It's that the parents of these young children are indeed establishing what kind of media use is going on in the home. And that was an important finding, we thought. So let me move on to talk a little bit about how these technologies are being used in preschool programs. Um, 
as this points out, uh, we surveyed preschool teachers from the NAEYC, the National Association for the Education of Young Children's Database. That's the largest association of child care providers in the United States. They cover both school-based child care centers as well as home-based, but we were primarily interested in the school-based um, teachers. And our interest was to find out the extent to which technology was being used in the classroom. We surveyed, surveyed them actually in late 2012. The report came out in 2013, which was before the NAEYC changed its technology statement. In 2012, the NAEYC said no technology should be used in the classrooms. In particular, they were talking about television. They were talking about violent and sexualized content. And, but they said, keep it out. And, the change came about after two and a half years working on the um, new proposal. I happen to have been a part of that group that helped to design it. And now they talk about wanting to have technology that is developmentally appropriate for children, which is a huge change for NAEYC. So we were interested in surveying attitudes and uses of technology before the new policy went into effect. And then we went back in late 2014, and that report will come out um, in a few weeks, uh, 2015, to see if there had been a change in attitudes or a change in the uses of technology. Um, as I said, this, this study was done in collaboration both times uh, with the help of NAEYC and, this, and uh, the Fred Rogers Center. Uh, the first thing I should say is that the majority of the people that we surveyed, the 1,356 teachers in 2013 and the 945 in 2015, were from primarily female, white, and averaging 20 years of age uh, and 20 years of teaching, which is pretty much captures that population of preschool teachers. And the main findings from that one um, is that we found that there were some changes in that short amount of time in the amount of technology and kind of technology available in classrooms. And I think a lot of that has to do with the changing statement of how technology can be used. Uh, the technologies most likely available in both years were TV, TVs and DVDs, computers, and digital cameras. Digital cameras were extremely popular. Uh, so that the children can take pictures of what they're doing and send them home. And that's, that's, that's a very popular technology. We were surprised to find smart boards in one quarter of the classrooms and e-readers in uh, a lot fewer of the classrooms. That It's taking a while to, to capture those. The most interesting finding in that two-year period is the increase in the use of iPads. iPads moved from 29% of classrooms in 2013 to 55% in 2015, and that's an enormous jump. Okay, um, we were shocked by that. I have to say that the iPads are primarily used to, in, to connect with the parents at home and to do some administrative work, but increasingly the children are getting access to them as well. The main findings from that preschool study is that we found few differences in access to technology by income level of children in classrooms, because we were able to, to stratify high, medium, and low income. We found more educators in 2015 report professional development in educational technology. That was a real concern in 2013. They didn't know how to use the technology. And we found what's called secondary mostly secondary barriers to the uses of technology. It's not that they didn't have access to them. It's that Parents in many of these um, preschool programs disapproved of using technology in preschool classrooms. There were some financial resources re regarding the acquisition, not of the technology itself, but the software and the con constant maintenance of the technology. And the teachers themselves felt that they didn't have enough time to learn how to use the digital technology. Uh, they specifically were asking also for more um, uh, access to people who are curating useful kinds of content for different kinds of, of students in their classrooms. So the main takeaways from my report are that parents at the Media Ecology in the Home for Preschool Children's Engagement with Technology, and I, as an aside, one of the things we did interview some fathers, fathers are driving this as much as mothers, if not more so. Fathers feel really strongly that they need to give their preschool children technology to get them ready for schooling and their future life. Preschool classrooms are adopting tablets quickly. We saw a doubling in two years. And the barriers to using technology in preschools are not access issues, but teachers' comfort, training, and parental expectations. And with that, I thank you.